Hello, this video is the continuation of the Cloud Native Ninja series. In this video, we are going to see how to containerize Go applications. My name is Nilesh and let's get started. So far in this series, we have seen how to build a TechTalks application with a producer and consumer using Polyglot programming models or Polyglot programming languages. We started off with .NET Core and we've also seen how to build uh, containerized applications using Java. Along with the mainline programming languages or mainstream programming languages like .NET and Java, we are also using a distributed application runtime or Dapper, which allows us to build modular applications and microservices, and this can be deployed in any environment. So if you don't know what is Dapper, I did a session earlier or I did a video earlier in this series, which talks about how to create a dapperized application or how to integrate dapper with our application. And we also use a message broker for our application to decouple our producer and consumer APIs. So in this video, we are going to see how to use all these with Go. So the first thing we do is let me switch over to the Visual Studio code and see how to get started with the Go code. We will look at the producer and then we will switch over to the consumer. The producer is the API which produces a certain number of messages. So we start with the different import statements, importing the dependencies that we need for our Go application. There is a faker which we are using to fake the uh, domain object, the tech talk object that we are using for our application. And we also refer the Dapper, the Go SDK. Dapper has built-in support for Go. It provides a Go SDK. So we are using the client, Dapper client from the Go SDK. And we use the PubSub component for RabbitMQ and the topic as Tech Talks. So this is the Dapper component which is used. And again, if you don't know what a Dapper component is, I highly recommend that you go back and look at the previous video. What are the different components supported by Dapper? And then we finally go to the actual uh, handler or the router which creates a HTTP server. We listen to 8080 port on that uh, server. And we have this generate method with the number of messages to be produced as an input parameter. This function, it creates those dummy objects, the number of tech talks. And then using the dapper client, we publish an event. So we use that pop sub component and the topic and then the actual tech talk as the payload to publish the event. And the domain object or the struct looks like we have the ID for the tech talk. We have the tech talk name, category, and the level ID. On the consumer side, the things are similar. So again, we start with importing the dependencies that we have. Here, we uh, import the dapper D or the service as a dependency for the Go SDK. Using this service, we subscribe to the PubSub component of dapper and then when we create a new service, we add a topic handler. So that is the uh, capability provided by Dapper SDK to us. And the event handler, it converts the uh, tech talk payload that we receive into a interface or JSON data. We unmarshal that data back into the tech talks object and we display in the log what is the details of that particular tech talk. That is what the programming is doing. So let's go and see how to build this to make sure that we are able to build the application. So we use the Go tools, Go build tools to go and build the application in the first place. So I'm building the producer uh, in the beginning or producer as the first application using build command. So we have the application built and in the producer directory where the Go source code exists, we can see that there is producer.exe, uh, the binary generated as part of uh, running this Go build command. Uh, with this, we know that our application is building fine and there are no syntax errors or there is no problem with the source code. Now let's go and containerize this application. We will containerize both the producer and the consumer and before that, Let's use the go clean command to clean the producer exe which is generated. To start with containers, I am going to use <coughs> again the uh, docker file. I did a couple of videos earlier to talk about what is a multi-stage build and how we can optimize the build using the build cache. 
So I'm going to use the similar concept when it comes to building the Go binaries or containerizing the Go application as well. We start with the first stage, which is the build stage, and we are using the Golang official image provided by uh, Golang. We are using 1.20 tag or 1.20 version of Go, and I'm using the Alpine based image because the Alpine based images, they are very small in size. They are very lightweight. In all the other previous videos, uh, be it for .NET Core or for Java or Java Spring Boot, you would have seen me using the Alpine based images. So here also, I'm going to use the Alpine based image. Then we create the build directory and we copy the contents of this particular producer files or the folder into the build directory. In an ideal scenario or in a normal scenario rather, we would have run the go build command and given this hyphen a hyphen o and producer dot as the parameters. But I want to optimize the multi-stage build process because we are using multiple stages in this build. Every time I use the docker build command, it will download the dependencies for me. To avoid that scenario and to make sure that I'm using the uh, binaries or the dependencies which might be already downloaded onto my docker host i'm going to use this feature of uh, docker uh, which allows us to cache the dependencies so i use the mount type as cache and i specify the id and the target so whatever is there in this dot cache under the root folder and go build which are our dependencies those would be reused if we run the same build again on the same host. So that's the optimization I'm going to do for both the producer and consumer. And once we have the producer binary generated or producer exe generated, we don't need all the build tools from the build stage. So in that case, uh, I'm going to use a different version of the Alpine image. And we are going to uh, build another image for the run environment. So the initial line number one to 10, is where we build the go uh, binary and then we use that binary to deploy to the target environment so in the target environment we are going to use alpine 3.17 base image and from our earlier stage which is the builder stage we copy the output from the build directory so uh, this command the go build will output the producer in go build or the build directory and then uh, at the entry point, which is the starting point of our container. When we run the executable or when we run our container image, this is what will be run as the default command. So we are going to execute the producer.exe command. There. For the consumer, it is exactly the same process except for the change in the folder directory or directory location where the folders, uh, the consumer source code exists and the output directory name or the output binary name. So let's switch over back to the terminal again. And this time I'm going to build this. So I'm going to use the docker build command here to build the uh, producer first. So let's use this docker build hyphen T to tag the image. I'm going to tag uh, the image with the namespace as Nilesh Kule. Uh, this again, I explained in the earlier video where we talked about how to publish the container images to Docker Hub, which is the public container registry. So this Nilesh Kule specifies the name of my container or namespace of my container registry in Docker Hub. And then Tech Talks producer is the actual image. Go is the tag that we specify and dot is the context. So this particular command is running in the producer folder. So it's passing that complete context to the uh, Docker build process. Let's see how much time this build takes. So this will uh, pull down those dependencies and it will be cached as part of the mount cache instruction that we have put in our multi-stage Docker file. So while the image is being built, let's go and have a quick look at what are the different images I have uh, on my local machine. So if I run the Docker images command, we will see that uh, when I ran it earlier, there were three images we should be getting the similar result. So I have the three images which are required for Dapper. And once our producer build is successful, we should have the new image created for the producer, TechTalks producer, with the tag as go.
Well, that took longer than expected to have the go build uh, or build the container image. Usually it doesn't take so long. It took so long that in fact, I decided to record the rest of the video on a completely different day. Let's get back to our containerizing go applications and see what else can we do. So now we have the uh, image, the uh, tech talks producer with uh, go tag image build. This was almost seven days ago that I built. So you can imagine that it took me one week to record the rest of the video. Now continuing with the other videos that I did for containerizing .NET applications or Java, you would have seen that I move from a single container based image to a multi container uh, based images. And I use Docker Compose, which allows us to build and uh, run the images, multiple container images in one go. So here again, let me trigger this Docker Compose command and uh, we are going to use the docker compose uh, go file i think i am in the wrong folder here yeah let me uh, go to the correct folder so here i have the different docker compose files so let's run the docker compose uh, command again and we are going to uh, use the file which is docker compose go docker hub for the images which are going to be published to public docker hub container registry and i'm going to run the build command so what i'm expecting as part of this build is since we have used that build cache capability to cache the dependencies for the producer the consumer image should be built much faster in the earlier version to build the producer it took more than five minutes or close to five minutes but since the caching is happening for dependencies, my expectation is that the consumer build will be much more faster. So while that build is happening, let's go and have a quick look at the Docker Compose file. So here I have two services, one for the producer. I'm going to tag the image with the namespace as Nilesh Kule and the Tech Talks producer as the name of the image and the tag will be go. Uh, the context for this is under the SRC folder under go directory and then the producer and we are passing the docker file with the name as docker file we can skip this uh, line number 8 and line number 14 since we are following uh, following the convention of using docker file as the name for docker file itself if the file name is different then this makes more sense but just because i was using it in the earlier versions i've kept it for consistency purpose here same thing for the consumer so we have another service here uh, related to the consumer and we are going to tag it as tech talks consumer with a go tag so let's see if the image is built and here as per my expectation the image has been built very quickly because those dependencies were cached and we can see that it took less than a minute in about 46 seconds uh, we have finished building the uh, container images for the producer and consumer now uh, let's see how do we use this image or if we first go and verify that we do have both these images created. This was created the consumer image with go tag about a minute ago and the producer was created about seven days ago. So using the Docker Compose now allows us to build multiple images in one go. I will also go and publish this to the uh, container registry. So uh, if anybody wants to test this image, they can test it using the docker run command so uh, instead of build now i'm going to use the push command with the docker compose and whatever images i have in that compose file would be pushed to the docker hub public container registry and they will have the tag as go now once we have that image how do we run that image if i want to test it locally I can use this docker run command and specify different flags. I want to run it in detach mode uh, where once the image is created or once the container instance is created, I don't want my terminal to be attached to the standard output of this uh, container. The name of the image that uh, container we are going to create is tech talks producer and we are doing the port mapping here where the 8080 port on the container is mapped to 8080 port on the host. And the image we are going to use is Tech Talks producer with tag as go. We will do the same thing. So uh, the image is uh, started or the container is started. And then same way for the consumer. 
Now, if we go into the Docker and we look at the dashboard, we should be able to see both these images up and running or both these containers, the producer and the consumer up and running. So let's go into the containers section here and we see that under the Cloud Native Ninja, we have the Tech Talks producer and the Tech Talks consumer, which started about less than uh, 30 seconds ago. And we also see the mapping. So this way we can test locally that the containerized versions of our producer and consumer, they are up and running. So with that, let's switch back to the slides and see what did we achieve during uh, this session or this video. Uh, we started with building the Docker image or using the Docker file where we use uh, multi-stage images, Alpine based multi-stage images. We use the uh, Go uh, build tools based image for the building in the builder stage. And then we use the Alpine image for actually executing the producer and consumer executables. So this helps us to separate the build and run stages. And it also helps us to keep the image sizes very small. So if we go back and look at the uh, size of the image under Docker images, we can see that the Tech Talks consumer is less than 23 MB, 22.9 MB, almost 23 MB. And same way the Tech Talks producer is just about uh, 23 and half MB. So that way, uh, by separating this build and the run stage of the images, we are able to create very lightweight container images. And then we also saw how to publish these images to the public Docker Hub registry using Docker Compose and working with multi containers or multiple containers. So whatever I showed during this demo, it is available in the uh, GitHub repository named as Cloud Native Ninja. You can either scan the QR code or you can hit that URL. Uh, under my uh, profile, Nilesh Kule, uh, and the Cloud Native Ninja repository. All the slides are published to SlideShare and Speaker Deck. Uh, please go through this uh, and let me know in the comment section, how did you find containerizing the Go applications? If there are any better ways of doing the same thing, I would love to hear from you. Uh, if you would like to contribute to the Cloud Native Ninja series, there are various topics or various items on that list where I would like to seek help from the experts and I'm more than willing to accept the pull request. So feel free to contribute to this Cloud Native Ninja series as well. Thank you for watching this video and until next time, code with passion and strive for excellence.